doing good unto the household of faith, Galatians chapter 10. Oh, chapter 6. I'm sorry. My dyslexia is messing with me. I'm saying 10 first. Amen. 610. God has led me to another text. Uh, we're going to be looking at today Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Would you please stand in reverence? to the word of God. Stand symbolically saying that I will stand on the word of God. It is our tradition at Bethlehem to read the word out loud at the same time. That's our theme for the year, by the way, is that we are getting to know Him. Right. Let's read this out loud together at one time. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, very familiar text. Verses 1 through 3. Uh, let's read this out loud together on 3. 1, 2, 3. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, I write, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land that I have given to thee, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, that I've given you, and I say it Amen. You may be seated in the household of the Lord today. We're going to share a message entitled, Walking into the Promises of God. All right, now. Walking into the Promises of God, a short title, Walk Into It. Walk right. Into it. Yes, yeah. Today we're going to share three points as the Holy Spirit allows us. We're going to talk about the circumstances of the promise. We're going to talk about the command of the promise. And then we're going to talk about the circumference of the promise. We're going to talk about the circumstance of the promise, the command of the promise, and the circumference of the promise. We want Christians to know today that Christians should walk into the promises of God. All right. Amen. Christians should walk into the promises of God. Amen. We're now in a very familiar text. And it's a text that tells the story of how God delivered Israel. Who was in bondage down there in Egypt. And God used a man by the name of Moses. A prince of Egypt, if you would, because he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter. Right now. And he used this man after he hewed him out to be the one that would go back to Pharaoh and tell them the famous words, let my people go. Let my people go. And God once again moved miraculously in the life of the children of Israel. So many miracles, uh, uh, miracles that probably uh, was in the, the factor of a, a creation. God had never moved like he moved in since the creation. All right, now. Oh, oh, and he came up against this great nation, but God is a greater God than any nation. Yes, right. yes, yes. And he loosed his people. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And you would think that his people would have been happy. Oh, because they had been loosed and, and set free. Yes, sir. Well. But I heard the pastor say, uh, as we were talking, 
talking about this uh, uh, parenthetically, the be careful who you leave in charge. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, because after Moses was on that mountain, he left his brother in charge here. instead of praising the Lord. All right, now. Yes, sir. They built a false idol, and your pastor told me in the back, be careful who you leave in charge. Yeah. Joshua and Caleb. All right. All right. Caleb was the one that said, Hush the people and quieted the people and said, We can do this. Yes, we can go into the promises of God as, as the people were naysaying. Yes, oh, be careful, Mount Zion, that you don't become naysayers. Yes, oh, as the man of God is trying to lead you uh, to new places and to new this great man Moses had left the scene and undoubtedly he was a great man oh, yeah. undoubtedly God had never moved in such a way he was a great man mm. and you would think that once you lose a great 